Hello from Tokyo. I'm Masami, Global Strategy Director of a science lab based in Japan. We are a frontier science team that aims to develop a new clean energy called quantum hydrogen energy. We have three labs in this building and two more at Tohoku University, 200 miles to the north from here. And in these monitors, we can observe what is happening in each lab and with each reactor. I guess many of you would agree that we need some breakthrough technology to reach net zero by 2050. Well, we believe our quantum hydrogen energy can actually be the one. Here is why. QHT produces a huge amount of energy with a very small amount of hydrogen. QHT's energy density per gram of fuel is very high, more than 10,000 times higher than burning hydrogen or burning natural gas. So only a very small amount of hydrogen, like the amount of hydrogen made from half a glass of water, is enough to power the monthly energy needs of an average household. Isn't it great if all the fuel you need was just half a glass of water to power your house for months? And how much does this energy last? QHA can run for more than one year once we load hydrogen at the beginning. We even have a record that lasted for 589 days. So what's this QHE? Quantum hydrogen energy is heat generating technology with nuclear reactions using nickel and copper composite material. And this is the stem image of the nickel and copper composite material. Nano sized layers of nickel and copper are applied on a thin nickel foil. The metal sheet absorbs a small amount of hydrogen and when the metal sheet is heated, the hydrogen in the metal sheet diffuses, causing nuclear reactions that produce heat. And the special feature of the QHE is that even if it involves nuclear reactions, it is very safe. What do I mean by safe? Firstly, QHE does not generate radiations. We always have a gamma ray and neutron monitors next to the QHE reactors but we have never detected any extra radiation more than the natural one. Secondly, QHG does not leave any radioactive waste either. We always check the metal sheet before and after the reactions, as well as the gas generated during the reactions, but we have never observed any radioactive substances. So we are expecting that we'll be able to recycle the metal sheet without much complications. And thirdly, QHE does not trigger runaway reactions like nuclear fission does. The reactions stop automatically when it's overheated because the nickel and copper start to melt over 1000 degrees Celsius and the nanolayer nano structure will be gone. In summary, QHE is a CO2 free clean energy that is very powerful and safe. These are some of our QHG reactors. They are constantly producing more output energy than input energy. By now, it may be starting to sound too good to be true, isn't it? Especially if you have never heard of this. But it's all true, and I tell you where this technology comes from. On March 11, 2011, we experienced a terrible huge earthquake in Tohoku where we now have some of our labs. Massive tsunamis swashed away some entire towns and more than 20,000 people lost their lives. To make it worse, the tsunamis destroyed the emergency power system of the Fukushima nuclear plants and caused the disaster that many of you may remember. This is when and why we felt we needed a new clean energy so we don't need to rely any more on nuclear fission power. Instead of nuclear fission, we decided to work on what was once known as cold fusion. We felt it was a powerful alternative solution that was not receiving enough attention that it deserved. For those who have never heard about cold fusion, it was a big discovery 
that Professor Fleischmann and Pons made back in 1989. At that time, it was not replicable and eventually it lost public attention. But a small group of scientists, including the three professors who work with us today, believed that cold fusion did exist and continued to study it. After 34 years since Fleischmann and Pons' this discovery, Professor Iwamura from Tohoku University has found a new way to generate nuclear energy. Similar to cold fusion, but not quite, because now we use hydrogen instead of deuterium, we, we use nickel and copper instead of palladium, and the temperature is around 500 to 900 degrees Celsius, or 900 to 1600 degrees Fahrenheit, instead of room temperature. So we put a new name to this new energy as quantum hydrogen energy or QHE in short. Before joining Clean Planet, Professor Iwamura, together with Professor Ito on the right, did research on element transmutation at Mitsubishi Heavy Industries for many years. QHE is actually the same sort of experiment, but instead of focusing on element transmutation, they are now focusing on heat generation. 30 years of hard work is finally coming to bear fruit. We have come a long way to be able to produce more output energy than input energy constantly. But the challenges continue until we can make this energy usable as a new clean energy. Our current challenge is to complete this QHE prototype heat module. It is freely connectable and scalable, so the same module can be used for different needs. Once the prototype is done, we will start testing for mass production. We will start testing in actual products such as industrial boilers. We will start commercial production. We will develop other applications. There are still a lot to do, but the path to take is clear. We believe we can go through all the challenges because we want to make this clean energy available to everyone in every corner of the world. Professor Iwamula, what would you say? Yes, I'm very satisfied with what we have achieved so far. There is no doubt anymore about the excess heat production. Based on the previous experimental results in this field, and the results of a national project back in 2017. Clean Planet has great engineers who are working hard to scale up and develop a product. I'm sure we can make it. The biggest strength of our method is its low production cost, which is achieved by using widely available materials such as light hydrogen, nickel, and copper instead of palladium and uh, deuterium used in the early days of cold fusion. Furthermore, operating temperatures are on the order of 700 degrees Celsius, make it, making it suitable for use in turbines and other industrially popular equipment. The future field is very broad and deep and it is and it's full of new discoveries. Recently, we have made new discoveries about the relationship between nanostructured nickel components and excess heat production. We have also created and patented a new method to control QHG reactions. The application of QHG is not only limited to the use of heat generation in the industrial field, but also includes building power supplies, cogeneration systems, and powering electric vehicles, and even energy sources for drones and robots. We hope that many people will become interested in our field and join us in opening up a new future. Thank you, Professor Iwamura. The future with this CO2-free Quantum hydrogen energy is getting closer and closer. The first product we are working on now is QHE powered industrial boilers. And once the industrial boiler is completed, we will move on to power generation using those boilers. 
QHA can also be energy source for buildings and houses, both heat and electricity, with QHA-powered cogeneration equipment. And we will not leave anyone behind. QHA can also be perfect for remote areas as off-grid system. Well, many people call us crazy, digging out cold fusion again now. But has any greatest invention come from non-crazy state of mind? Nikola Tesla? Thomas Edison, the Wright brothers, Steve Jobs. What do you think? We will stay crazy until we make another sound for this planet. Thank you.